Is my screen visible to everybody? Hello, Samlikum. Can you all guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, and is my screen visible to everybody? Yes. Okay. So now let's start. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Dr. Kiran Minhas and uh, from the platform of PNNDP. I welcome you all to today's session on um, anaphylaxis management. And um, I welcome Dr. Arsalan Siddiqui. He's a consultant pediatrician at Child Life Foundation. And as you all know, PNNDP is um, working to help you guys prepare for your exams and to keep you guys updated. These are our um, contact, uh, Facebook page, Gmail ID and website links. Our main aim is to improve skills, knowledge of our trainees, also to refresh knowledge of pediatricians and neonatologists through workshop sessions and involving multidisciplinary teams that will obviously improve mortality and morbidity. This is the panel. Uh, founded by Dr. Ayaz Ahmed. Board members include um, Dr. Adil Khaled and Dr. Ishad Ali Bajir. And these were the, these are the members who have joined in 2019-2020 and uh, the ones who have joined in 2020-2021. Now we are almost at the end of, this is the last session of March 2021, Alhamdulillah. Uh, most of you have attended the all the sessions. You can follow us on our YouTube channel for at a glance videos on common clinical and theory topics. And each one of you guys can also contribute and write to us for our website. Uh, it could be a short case, long case. It could be image video section. You can send image of your patient with clinical signs with the a brief uh, description of either DDs, treatment and any, any recent advances. Interesting case competition is in line. I will tell about it in a short while in the next slides. And uh, you can also contribute to the PNNDP blog section. Um, any clinical topic, theory topic, clinical leadership skills, uh, like ABC interpretation, approach to short stature, how to read ECG, anything that you think you can contribute, uh, it's always welcome. And you can contact us at our email, idpnndpp at gmail.com for further info. And uh, now we have planned a uh, two days free neonatal workshop. It's coming soon in June. And uh, it's basically on the basic neonatal skills scores, a two day workshop. It is approved by CPD by the Royal College of Physicians and Child Health. And uh, you guys can register, year one and year two trainees are invited to register, but they will need the approval letter from the supervisors. Only 15 seats are available for this round. It will be a two-day workshop. It will be held via Zoom on 26th and 27th of June from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So all those who are interested can contact us and get approval letters from their supervisors to become a part of this workshop. And all, uh, all the candidates will get uh, our CPCH CPD approved certificate for attending the workshop. So we must be um, getting info about the workshop and we'll uh, update you. Uh, you can follow our Facebook page to get the details. And you can email us at uh, pnmdpp at gmail.com. And also all of you know, you can, all the trainees who are actually a part of the training can also become part of the PNNDP as a regional training representative. You can contact us for that as well. And um, PNNDP just in case competition series is um, uh, scheduled for uh, after May. And the last date has been extended to 30th April. So all those who are interested can still send in their entries and become a part of this interesting case competition. And this is the link for today's session. I'll post it in the chat box and you'll get the link on the Facebook page as well. So without wasting any more time, I will uh, request Dr. Salan Siddiqui. Dr. Salan Siddiqui, can you hear me? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, Dr. Kiran, I can hear you. I hope so you can how are hear you? me fine. Yes, we can hear you. How are you, sir? I'm great, alhamdulillah. Okay. 
So it's a great honor that you have uh, taken out time to become uh, to uh, take a session um, from the platform of PNNBP. So you can share your screen. We can hear you. Right. And you can take over. Right. So I hope you can hear me uh, fine and can see my screen. Yes, it is visible and we can hear you. You can continue. Perfect. Right. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, can, uh, yeah. I hope you're you all. Give your presentation and then we'll take in the questions at the end of the session, inshallah. Okay. Perfect. Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Dr. Arslan Rahman and I hope you're all doing great and uh, keeping safe during this pandemic era. I would like to thank uh, team PNMDP uh, for giving me this opportunity to talk on this platform. Uh, you guys have been doing a wonderful job. I keep I look forward to your sessions and attend it uh, as much uh, time as I get. Uh, I am Dr. Aslan Rahman, and I am currently working as a senior clinical instructor in the emergency department, supported by Child Life Foundation Pakistan. Uh, I've done my uh, medical school from Sin Medical College, and I've done my uh, postgraduate training in pediatrics from Civil Hospital and Afan, and now I'm working with Child Life Foundation for the last two years. So I, uh, I've tried to keep my uh, presentation uh, very short and crisp. Uh, I would like, I would love it if, uh, if uh, this presentation is uh, interactive. If you guys have any question, you can drop it in the chat box or raise your hand. Maybe Dr. Kiran can facilitate us at the end of the presentation. Uh, right. So yeah, sure, uh, right. the topic uh, that I have been given today. Yeah. Thank you. So the topic that I have been given today uh, to present is a very important topic, which we commonly see in uh, the pediatric depart emergency department is anaphylaxis management and the use of EpiPen. So let's start. So I have nothing to disclose and I have no conflict of interest. Uh, so the learning objective for today's session would be, I uh, will start with the definition and then we'll briefly go through the diagnostic criteria and the management, then the NFLXS algorithm and discharge instructions and the use of EpiPen. Right. So, right, nine, yeah. So let's begin with this scenario. Uh, a four year old patient, uh, yeah. A four year old patient uh, uh, received in the emergency department who was waiting for admission from night for, for pneumonia. The patient received vancomycin and ceftriaxone. And when you started the initial impression on appearance, uh, the child was sleeping comfortably, uh, having fast breathing, and the color was normal. So based on this, your clinic initial impression, is it a life-threatening condition or a non-life-threatening condition? Since the child is sleeping comfortably, having normal color, and only having fast breathing, we'll say that this is a non-life-threatening condition. Moving on, uh, on the primary assessment, uh, his airway is clear and is maintained. Uh, in breathing, respiratory rate is 40 per minute, ha having saturation of 96% and room air. He's having mild chest in drawing uh, because of pneumonia, obviously, and chest uh, and there is poor aeration at the left base, and there is no associated BSEC. In circulation, he has a heart rate of 120, uh, having blood pressure of 88 by 40, and with good peripheral pulses and perfusion. Uh, in disability, uh, he is anxious, uh, but sleeping. Uh, his pupils are reactive and having normal RBS. On exposure, there's a fine lacy pink rash on trunk and now on the back. He is otherwise if, uh, if, uh, febrile and his CRT is brisk. So what do you think? What's happening here? If anyone can comment in the chat box, that would be great. Anyone? Anyone would like to volunteer? We can unmute them. I can uh, answer the question. Great. Thank you, you Sobia and Sahar. They're saying urticaria and rash from the drugs. Excellent. Zabadas. So, yeah, it's possibly urticaria from the vancomycin. Uh, we have seen that reaction. Uh, uh, or it can be angioedema. You don't know. Right. So, moving on in the secondary assessment. And what is the drug of choice for urticaria? What would you do in this case? 
Yes, Dr. Azan, thank you. This is urticaria. Yes. And what would you do? What is the first line treatment for urticaria or drug reaction, you would say? Hydrocortisone, all right. Dithinhydramine, great. Adrenaline, hydrocortisone, right. So, yeah. So, the first line drug for urticaria is antihistamine. Good, Amy. Yep. So, you will give antihistamine. Steroids are not the first line drug for uh, urticaria and even for anaphylaxis, right. So, that is a very common practice in art that we have been trained uh, throughout our uh, house job and all the residency as well. Uh, when we have a reaction, hota, we give Avil and Dexa together, right. So, the first line of treatment for urticaria is antihistamines, right. Great. So moving on, you manage the child and then you uh, move further to secondary assessment. And when you did the repeat vitals after a while, his heart rate has increased from 120 to 130. His respiratory rate has increased. Uh, he is desaturating now. His sats are 80% and his blood pressure is still 85 by 35. Uh, you uh, evaluated further on uh, allergies. He has no history of uh, previous allergies. Uh, he hasn't taken any medication apart from ceftriaxone and vancomycin. There, there's no significant past history. Uh, he took his last meal in the morning, and even was that after vancomycin reaction, he developed this rash, and now he's deteriorating. Uh, on head to toe examination, uh, on head, ear, eyes, and nose, and throat examination, his face and lips became swollen. Uh, he is now tachycardic, having brisk. CRT of more than three seconds. Uh, he is having distress, uh, which has increased now from the uh, previous baseline distress. And now he is having, he is having wheezing as well. Uh, he, uh, on abdominal examination, his bound, bowel sounds are exaggerated. He is anxious and uh, his musculoskeletal examination is normal. So now, what do you think? What happened now? So you diagnosed correctly. Yes, uh, he had uh, urticaria. Uh, but on your reassessment, he is deteriorating. He's, uh, he's deteriorating cardiovascularly. He's deteriorating his uh, respiratory system. Right, excellent. Shock, anaphylactic shock, anaphylaxis. Yes, excellent. So yes, you guys are right. This is anaphylaxis. So this is a criteria for the diagnosis of anaphylaxis. We are going to probe this in detail, all three criteria. Uh, so our kid is falling in this criteria. Right, because there is acute onset of illness, there is skin involvement, and there is respiratory compromise, and he is having uh, either reduced blood pressure or accelerated end organ dysfunction. Right, so this is an anaphylactic reaction, yeah, anaphylactic shock, yeah, anaphylactic reaction, all are the same. Right, so coming to definition, what is anaphylaxis? Uh, so in July 2005, there uh, was a con second conference of panel of allergy and immunology. And they, they uh, defined, the experts sat down and defined that the anaphylaxis uh, is defined as a serious allergic reaction that is rapid in onset and may cause death. Right, so this is the definition. So what is the diagnostic criteria? So anaphylaxis and discuss is highly likely when one of the three criteria are fulfilled, uh, which include these, and we are going to see all them, all of them one by one. So the criteria one is uh, acute onset of of an uh, acute onset of illness involving skin, mucosal tissue, or both, and at least one of the following. So along with the skin and mucosal involvement, there should be uh, one more system involved, either respiratory compromise in the form of dyspnea, wheezes, strider, reduced peak expiratory flow, or hypoxemia, or reduced blood pressure, or associated uh, symptoms no, no, of uh, tissue no, 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 uh, hypoperfusion. I think. Uh, no, 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 no. Mute. Great. Thank you. So, yeah. Right. So, if they, there is a certain onset of illness uh, taking minutes to several hours with involvement of skin or mucosal tissue or both, uh, at least one of the following, including sudden respiratory compromise in the form of shortness of breath, disease, cough, stride, or hypoxemia, or sudden reduced blood pressure or symptoms of end organ dysfunction in the form of hypotonia or sudden collapse or incontinence. So remember, skin symptoms and signs are present in up to 90% of anaphylactic reactions. So this criteria will be very helpful for you to diagnose the, the children with anaphylaxis in the emergency department. But remember, still uh, there are 10 to 20% of patients who can present without uh, skin involvement. Right? So this is the criteria number one. Uh, another criteria involves uh, two or more of the following that occur, occur rapidly after exposure to a likely allergen. In the previous case, you did not know uh, what, whether there was any allergic uh, uh, allergen exposed or known or suspected allergen. In this case, in the criteria two, there will be a likely allergen. And uh, along with that, any two of the four criteria should be met. 
uh, which include involvement of the skin, mucosal tissue, as discussed, they can be hives, itching, swollen lips, tongue, or uvula, or respiratory compromise like dyspnea, wheezes, stridor, or hypoxemia, or reduced blood pressure or associated and organ damage like. Because of hyperperfusion, they can be collapse, hypotonia, syncope, incontinence. And uh, in this criteria, there is one more system involvement that is gastrointestinal symptoms, for example, having crampy abdominal pain, or vomiting. So this is very important uh, criteria to remember that, as you can see, the child may only present with respiratory compromise and a gastrointestinal compromise after exposure to a likely allergen. So in this case, the diagnosis of uh, you, you uh, need to keep a high index of suspicion uh, for to make the diagnosis of uh, uh, anaphylaxis. Most majority of the time, these kids are usually, uh, there's a history that the child went out and ate something or was playing in the garden and then came back and was having respiratory distress and there was gastrointestinal symptoms or reduced blood pressure. They may or may not be skin involvement, right? Right. So again, this is in the pictorial form. Uh, among the four, there should be two criteria, skin or mucosal involvement, sudden respiratory symptoms, sudden reduced blood pressure or symptoms of an organ dysfunction or sudden gastrointestinal symptoms. So remember, it is applied to a patient with exposure to a substance that is likely allergen for them, right? So the last criteria, the criteria number three, uh, is this reduced blood pressure expo after exposure to a known allergen for that patient. For example, a person is a known allergic to something and he had exposure to, for example, uh, allergic to peanuts and he had exposure to peanuts and after that he only had a reduced in blood pressure, right? So uh, reduced blood pressure or exposure to a known allergen for that patient uh, includes an infant and children, low systolic blood pressure is uh, de dependent, uh, depending on the age or greater than 30% decrease in the systolic blood pressure and in adults, uh, systolic blood pressure of less than 90. So as we know in the infant, according to PALS, uh, if blood pressure, ki baat kare, so the infant, uh, new in the normal systolic blood pressure ki value hoti hai, wo hoti hai 60. If the blood pressure is less than 60, then it will be called hypotension. And if up to one year, the, the cutoff is 70. Uh, and from one year to 10 year, there is a formula, age in year into two plus 70. And more than 10 years, the, the blood pressure, if the systolic blood pressure is less than 90, then we will say that this is hypotension. Right. So these are the three important criteria for the diagnosis of anaphylaxis. The number one was that there was certain involvement of skin and mucosal tissue and along with one of the following either respiratory involvement and or cardiovascular involvement. And the criteria number two was that uh, uh, if the child was exposed to a likely allergen and out of four, there were two in, uh, uh, organ system involvement like uh, skin or mucosal involvement, respiratory compromise, cardiovascular compromise, or uh, gastrointestinal symptoms. And the third criteria where the child was exposed to a known allergen uh, for that patient. And in this case, even if the one organ system that is cardiovascular system, symptom, uh, system is involved, that is if the child is having hypotension according to the age, then we will say that the child is having anaphylaxis. And, and in this case, the child may, may need to be managed according on the lines of anaphylaxis. Right. So coming to science, and, uh, most of the science and we have already discussed, uh, there can be multi-system involvement in anaphylaxis. Uh, in the CNS, uh, as we know, there is hypoxia and all. The child may be fussy, may be irritable, he may be drowsy or lethargic, having reduced level of consciousness or somnolence. So basically, it's a type of shock. It's a type of distributive shock. And we all know in shock, what happens, the body is not getting the necessary nutrients and there is hyperperfusion and hypoxia. And when the blood perfusion, the brain is compromised, the child may initially present with only fussiness or irritability or anxiety, followed by drowsiness, lethargy, and followed by decreased level of consciousness and, and eventually unconsciousness. Uh, coming to skin, there may be urticaria, there may be maculopapular rashes, and there, there may be history of pruritus, or they can present with angioedema, or they may be simply flushed. Uh, in the respiratory system, uh, in upper airway, they can have strider. So strider, uh, whenever a child presents to you with strider, anaphylaxis comes in the differential diagnosis. Or the child may have having uh, maybe having simple simple uh, hoarseness. There may be oropharyngeal uh, or laryngeal edema, uvular edema, swollen lips and tongue. Uh, the child may be sneezing, having uh, allergic symptoms like sneezing, having rhinorrhea, or may be uh, presenting with upper airway obstruction due to swelling. Uh, in the lower airway, uh, the child may be coughing, uh, may be having dyspnea, uh, bronchospasm in the form of wheezes, uh, tachypnea, respiratory distress, uh, uh, progressing to even respiratory arrest. Uh, in the cardiovascular symptom uh, uh, system, he may be having tachycardia, uh, hypotension. Uh, you need to plot the uh, blood pressure either on the centile child or use the uh, use the systolic blood pressure uh, cutoff guideline according to PALS. Or he may be just dizzy, having syncope due to decreased hyper, uh, organ and organ perfusion, or may present with arrhythmia, diaphoresis, pallor, cyanosis, or even cardiac arrest if not managed accordingly. 
uh, in the GI symptom, he may be simply having nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or abdominal pain. So this is a very gray area, especially the gastrointestinal symptom. Usually these kids come to the emergency department and they are being managed sim uh, simply as acute gastroenteritis or simply as food poisoning. So uh, try to fit uh, the picture, uh, the symptom in the broader picture. Always keep your differential diagnosis in hand, especially if there is more than one syst uh, system involvement and if the history is very sudden, right? And the symptom uh, and presentation are not matching. Uh, moving on, so what are the different causes of, of anaphylaxis? There are multiple causes of anaphylaxis. Uh, if we talk about adults, so medications and insect stings are the mo most common causes in adults. Uh, but if we talk about children, so foods are the most common causes in children. Uh, mechanism, there are three different types of mechanisms for anaphylaxis. Uh, acute systemic reaction, which is IgE dependent mechanism. Um, commonly, this is uh, seen in, in anaphylaxis or there can be acute systemic reaction secondary to direct release of histamine from the uh, from the mast cells, uh, especially after exercise, exposure to cold or radio contrast material, etc. or any medication like I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, or it can be idiopathic anaphylaxis, and in, in some cases, you 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 may not find any uh, inciting agent, right? So, uh, this is a table uh, uh, illustrating the different causes of anaphylaxis. Uh, as we can see, uh, allergens that are IgE-dependent immunological mechanism is the most common one, and the food, especially peanuts, tree nuts, crustacean shellfish, uh, milk, egg. There can be a variety of food with which the child can be allergic, or it may be secondary to insect stings. Uh, or insect bites, medication, especially NSAIDs and antibiotics, uh, as we discussed in the first case as well, the child was allergic to vancomycin. Uh, or the biological materials like vaccines. We have seen, we uh, in the past, we had seen uh, when there was a drive for measles vaccination, we had seen a lot of cases of anaphylaxis. And the child, these kids, unfortunately, were managed as initially as food poisoning and uh, dehydration, but, even, but they were suffering from anaphylaxis and some of them were unfortunately missed and later they came to the garage and were diagnosed as anaphylaxis so always keep in mind when the vaccination is going on uh, they can present with anaphylaxis natural rubber latex is an important cause of uh, allergy for some uh, food additives included spices insect drive colorants vegetable gums so we tell them especially as some counseling can be that's what we tell them okay, avoid allergens usually you tell them to avoid the food that color, uh, color that contains colors like uh, red color yellow color like tang uh chips lace and all uh candies right or it may be due to inhalants like for example horse dander cat dander gross pollen you just see this change with the, uh, it is a difficult time for the children who are prone to having uh, allergic symptoms or human seminal uh, seminal fluids or occupational patient energy coming to immunological triggers which are ide independent mechanism these are rare uh, they uh, basically they are either ige dependent uh, uh, maybe secondary to some uh, antibodies like infliximab or coagulation system activation disorders or uh, idiopathic anaphylaxis so consider the possibility of a hidden or previously unrecognized trigger and consider the possibility of mass cell activation syndrome including systemic mastocytosis cytosis if you uh, if the child is coming to you uh, with anaphylaxis again and again and you cannot find anything so you, you may need to work for uh, these conditions so again you always need to keep uh, a differential diagnosis in your mind uh, so coming to non immunological triggers uh, which cause the direct activation of mast cells and basophil these are although rare uh, they may be secondary to physical factor for example some uh, may experience anaphylaxis after exercise like uh, like uh, same way it happens in asthma cold heat uh, they may occur second some medication like opioids or NSAIDs radio contrast agents alcohol right so these are the different causes and mechanisms of anaphylaxis right so moving on what should be the investigations uh, to diagnose the anaphylaxis. So usually lab tests are not usually required and the diagnosis of anaphylaxis is made, is made clinically and the immediate immediate treatment uh, should be started as soon as possible because the delay in treatment may uh, may uh, lead to fatality and, and mortality, right? So uh, there are no uh, routinely available labs to diagnose anaphylaxis. You need to diagnose the anaphylaxis on based on the criteria that I just discussed. There are three criteria that you need to keep in mind and uh, try to diagnose on uh, the, the child on these uh, criteria. So uh, serum markers may be helpful for long-term management, not for the acute management, uh, and especially when the diagnosis of 
anaphylaxis is unclear. You can either get histamine levels, uh, but you need to know that the histamine level peak within 10 minutes of onset of anaphylaxis and they return to baseline within 60 minutes. So if you're going to draw the lab, lab, level after one hour, you may not find the uh, desired histamine levels. But uh, again, it's a normal, uh, not a routine lab, and I'm not sure that our routine labs are available. Uh, and uh, another thing that you can get is total tryptase level. Uh, it may be tested within three hours of symptom onset. And pre tryptase level correlated with the severity of symptoms, although, but if the trip test level is uh, normal, it's not uh, uh, in the uh, higher side of the range, but you still need, uh, if, if you still have a high index of suspicion for anaphylaxis to treat as anaphylaxis. So again, as you see, there's no uh, role of routine investigation in the acute management, uh, management of anaphylaxis. Right. So coming to management of anaphylaxis. So uh, the the cornerstone uh, stone of initial management are the removal of the cause, right? If uh, in this case, you have never discussed here, the child was having infusion of vancomycin, you need to stop it immediately, right? And call for help, uh, intramuscular epinephrine at the earliest opportunity, followed by additional epinephrine if needed or IV in, uh, injection as needed. And uh, place the patient in the supine position with the lower extremities elevated, uh, unless there is obviously a prominent upper airway obstruction uh, causing the dis uh, compromise in the airway, you won't do this. Or you can keep the child in recumbent position and you can elevate the limbs if possible. Uh, you may need to provide supplemental oxygen to keep the saturation more than 94% and volume resuscitation with IV fluids if the child is especially hypotensive and having high signs of poor uh, uh, circulation or hypoperfusion. Right, so coming to the emergency stabilization. Uh, you always start with uh, airway breathing and circulation uh, using the systematic PALS approach. You maintain the airway. The simple measures to maintain the airway is head tilt and chin lift. And uh, uh, if you need to keep the child's airway in the neutral position, uh, neutral position or the sniffing position in which the three axes are met at the level of glottis, right? So you need to maintain the airway. Uh, breathing and circulation. And you may need to perform immediate intubation if there is signs of impending airway obstruction from angioedema. Uh, but you uh, need to keep one thing in mind that uh, uh, the delay may lead to complete obstruction. If there is delay in, uh, uh, delay in the management of airway uh, in anaphylaxis, it may lead to complete obstruction and the respiratory, respiratory distress may progress to respiratory failure and eventually cardiac arrest. And uh, once the child went, uh, go, uh, went into cardiac arrest, there is a very little chance that he's going to come back. So according to statistics, uh, there are only four to 14% chance uh, that if the child uh, goes into risk cardiac arrest and uh, there are only four to 14% percent that the chances that they, he uh, will revive from that. But again, uh, having some uh, long-term complication. So intubation uh, as uh, you are suspecting upper airway obstruction and there may be complete obstruction, intubation may, can be difficult. And ideally, it should be performed by the most experienced clinician available. And you need to, keep, to have anesthesia backup uh, uh, available or uh, another uh, uh, way of intubating the child. Uh, if, the, if you're unable to pass the tube, you may need to do cricothyrotomy or uh, uh, tracheostomy, right? So uh, always be prepared for this. Uh, along with that, the most important thing is continuous monitoring of the cardiopulmonary status and saturation. You need to keep uh, re-evaluating the child again and again. Uh, oxygen, uh, give eight to 10 liters of, uh, per minute uh, via face mask uh, or up to 100% oxygen as needed, depending on the clinical condition of the child. Some children come with uh, without uh, severe respiratory compromise. They may, be, may benefit from simple oxygen from two to four liter from the nasal cannula or some may require from the face mark, some may require from the uh, NRB mask. And always try to get vascular access. It's good to have two vascular uh, accesses so that you can use one for the resuscitation and other for the other medications. Uh, so it's always good to have two IV line, uh, especially large pores, uh, especially in the shock. Right, so the medical management. So medical management is all about epinephrine. Epinephrine is the mainstay of management. And please remember there are no absolute contraindication to epinephrine in the setting of anaphylaxis. Uh, Right. In some guidelines say that even before maintaining the airway, you have to arrange epinephrine and then move on to uh, doing uh, airway breathing and circulation. So uh, the epinephrine uh, giving is the utmost uh, is of utmost important, especially in anaphylaxis. So uh, as discussed previously, uh, delayed administration is associated with fatalities, and which route should be selected? Intramuscular is preferred over either subcutaneous route or IV because it is more faster and 
एंड इट इज सेफर राइट अभी हमने डिस्कस किया दे कैन बी कार्डियो वेस्कुलर कॉम्प्रोमाइज सो अगर आप सब क्यों देते हैं तो ऑब्वियसली देयर विल बी हाइपर परफ्यूजन ऑफ द स्किन तो सब क्यों से देयर विल बी लेस इफेक्टिव एब्जॉर्प्शन ऑफ एपिनेफ्रिन सिमिलरली आईवी देने का का जो साइड इफेक्ट है इट कैन बी इरेटिक एंड दे मे हैव लॉन्ग टर्म साइड इफेक्ट्स सो द बेस्ट रूट एंड द सेफेस्ट रूट फॉर एनाफाइलेक्सिस इज इंट्रामस्कुलर राइट and uh, which side should be used ideally i anterior lateral thigh should be used uh, for the intra uh, uh, muscular injections so the dose uh, please remember this is a different dose from the cardio uh, respiratory arrest algorithm jo hum bls ke andar use karte hain ya pals use karte hain during cardiac arrest jo hamare paas pakistan mein aur sab jagah pe formulation available hai that is 1 is to 1000 and uh, for cardiac arrest you need to give 1 is to 10000 jisko aap 1 ml leke 9 ml mein dilute karte hain and then you give it in cardiac arrest so whenever you are using epinephrine in the cardiac arrest that would be 1 in 10000 but in anaphylaxis the dose uh, the concentration would be 1 is to 1000 right and the dose it 0.01 mg per kg right so the dose is 0.01 mg per kg and the maximum dose is 0.5 mg per kg of 1 is to 1000 concentration so uh, ideally if, if you have a uh, epinephrine auto injector that is preferred to avoid delays because uh, if you are going to give epinephrine ob uh, obviously uh, it it is going to take time it's a high risk medication agar aapke pharmacy mein available nahi hai to aapko pharmacy se leke aana padega otherwise you need to open the crash cart usme se aapko nikalne padegi and then aapko usko tod ke syringe banana padega so it it is going to take time so agar aapke paas epinephrine available hai auto injector available hai to that is preferred so uske andar it comes with prefix doses there are uh, usually we are going to talk about in uh, in the last part of our my presentation uh, it comes in three different strengths uh, 0.15 mg and 0.3 mg are uh, widely available and some of the companies have now started preparing 0.1 mg as well uh, it is quite uh, it was quite difficult for me to get my hands on uh, epinephrine auto injector because uh, recently i was trying to find one but i couldn't right so please so uh, whatever you have stick to your, the normal regimen and always give epinephrine so if you have given epinephrine and then you need to check uh, for the response uh, either the child is responding or not if the child is not responding uh, the epinephrine may be repeated after 5 to 15 minutes interval uh, if there is no response or an inadequate response or even sooner if clinically indicated right so after 5 to 15 minutes then you can repeat the dose of epinephrine again hey, dr aslan uh, sorry to interrupt but there are two questions in the chat box yep Uh, somebody is asking why not antihistamine first and why epinephrine, and also uh, kindly explain cardiac dose of epinephrine versus anaphylactic dose. Okay, so. Uh... अगर हम बात करें अभी वी वर डिस्कसिंग अगर तो आपका पेशेंट प्रेजेंट विद अर्टिकेरिया द फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट इज एंटी हिस्टामिन एंड इफ द चाइल्ड प्रेजेंट विद एनाफाइलेक्सिस व्हिच इज एनाफाइलेक्टिक शॉक उसके अंदर जो फर्स्ट लाइन ट्रीटमेंट है दैट वुड बी एपिनेफ्रिन सो देयर आर अ लॉट ऑफ स्टडीज दैट हैव बीन कंडक्टेड वी कैन गिव एंटी हिस्टामिन अभी हम आगे जाकर डिस्कस करेंगे बट देयर हैज देयर हैज बीन नो प्रूवन रोल इट इज नॉट देखें अब हम जो एपिनेफ्रिन दे रहे हैं दैट इज बिकॉज ऑफ द अपर एयर ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन जो हो रही है उसको कम करने के लिए आपका जो हाइपोटेंशन हो रही है उसको करेक्ट करने के लिए राइट सो शॉक में आपका पेशेंट जा रहा है इसकी वजह से हम दे रहे होते हैं राइट right? जो आपका एंटी हिस्टामिन है जो स्टेरॉइड है वो आपके दूसरे सिम्टम्स को रिजॉल्व करेगा लाइक एचिंग है प्रोराइटिस है इट मे हेल्प विद दैट बट इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू रिलीव योर अपर एयरवे ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन एंड करेक्ट योर ब्लड प्रेशर दैट्स व्हाई एपिनेफ्रिन इज अ ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर एनाफाइलेक्सिस एंड या दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन एंड वेरी कॉमन मिसकंसेप्शन इन आवर एमएसएस डिपार्टमेंट स्पेशली द डोज ऑफ एपिनेफ्रिन सो अगर एज वी डिस्कस देयर आर the concentration available in our setting is 1 is to 1000 epinephrine which is an undiluted form jo ek vial hota hai that is of 1 mg and it is of 1 ml right so one vial of epinephrine is equal to 1 mg and and the uh, total dose is 1 ml and the concentration of epinephrine is 1 is to 1000 right in an anaphylaxis you need to give this undiluted one isko aapne dilute nahi karna aapne aise hi dena hai but in the cardiac arrest you need to give uh, the concentration uh, will be 1 is to 10000 now how will you make 1 is to 10000 from 1 is to 1000 concentration so you will have to do it manually kaise karte hain hum you take 1 ml that is one vial of epinephrine and dilute it in the 9 ml of normal saline now the concentration would be 1 is to 10000 aur usme se aap jo hai dose aapki wohi hoti hai one is 0.01 mg per kg ya 0.1 ml per kg aap usse nikal ke patient ko de rahe hote hain right i hope i i made myself clear here if you still have confusion to you can drop in the chat box i'll try to answer it right so 
Thank you, Dr. Salam. Very well explained. Right. So if the epinephrine is injected promptly intramuscularly, patient uh, responds to one, two, or at most three injections. Now, this is a very common question. How many times epinephrine repeat? How many times we repeat? How many times we repeat? How many times we repeat? How many So there is no clear cut criteria. But in majority of the cases, the patient uh, do respond after one or two doses. And in very few cases, he may need third dose. So uh, secondary dose is necessary and is needed in almost 12 to 36 percent of cases. So aap, aap roughly, you can say 20 percent of cases are in second dose. The other majority respond to one dose. But if you need it, you can give up to three and four uh, doses if uh, necessary, depending on the clinical condition and after five to 15 minutes. So uh, which patient is like who has repeated dose? Right. So especially if patient, patient with a history of previous anaphylaxis and those representing with flushing, diaphoresis or dyspnea, uh, they are more likely to require multiple doses of epinephrine to control symptoms in an, uh, according to one observational study that was conducted. Right. So especially who patient who has previously anaphylaxis and who has patient who has flushing ke saath, skin symptoms ke saath, or chest symptoms, ke saath present kare, they are more likely to receive a second dose. Right. If signs of if there are signs of poor perfusion uh, or symptoms are not responding to epinephrine, uh, prepare IV epinephrine for infusion. Right. We are going to discuss this uh, uh, in the coming slide in detail. This is called refractory anaphylaxis. So, uh, suppose that your child comes to you after you epinephrine, laga diya, first dose diya, and second dose, diya, but he is still in shock. He still has signs of poor perfusion. And after giving normal sign bolus, he is still not responding. So what can you do? You can start the continuous infusion start kar and the dose would be 0.12. Uh, one mic per kg per minute and obviously you are going to start with the lower dose and try to treat it according to the uh, symptoms and uh, physical findings right so coming to adjunctive therapies so uh, as discussed the first line treatment is epinephrine uh, you have given the epinephrine now what to do now if after giving epinephrine if your child is still having poor perfusion and uh, having uh, uh, weak pulses where, like there are signs of shock Again, Signs of shock. Ki baat karein, I hope you all know the signs of shock. I mean, they uh, know that systematically. Do we just uh, do not uh, label the patient as having shock just based on single finding, right? Uh, majority of us say that CRT is related to child. Child is in shock. No. Agar hum shock ki baat karein, to in CNS there will be irritability, anxiety, unconsciousness, or uh, or lethargy, drowsiness. Agar hum respiratory ki baat karein, he may be tachypneic, having freeze work of breathing. Cardiovascular system ki baat karein, he may be tachycardic, having hypotension or normal blood pressure, uh, CRT may be delayed, uh, per central and peripheral pulses may be uh, delayed, peripheries will be cold, uh, and abdomen ki baat kare, there may be abdominal distension due to hyperperfusion, uh, and there may be reduced urine output, right? So you, you, you need to identify the shock, and if there is signs of shock, you need to give a rapid bolus of 20 ml per kg of normal saline, and after giving the bolus, you reassess, right? You reassess, uh, uh, the child uh, that uh, is there signs of improvement like uh, tachycardia is improving or not or, or or the pulses are getting better Joby sign up maybe I'm shock or diagnose connected they all should reverse similarly you need to see if the child is going into uh, fluid overload like having uh, uh, basal crepitations having hepatomegaly increased work of breathing tachycardia is worsening it means the child is going into so, so you may you know, you, uh, you have you will have to reevaluate and repeat fluid boluses as needed and always monitor the urine output right you Usually after giving the first bullet, the child passes urine. So always catheterize or keep an eye on, on urine output, right? Uh, so al along with fluid resuscitation, you can give antihistamines. Uh, antihistamines are of two types, H1 and H2 blockers. Uh, H1 blockers, uh, can there be just second generation antihistamine and that are recommended, uh, which include diphene, hydramine, or cetrazine. Uh, as discussed uh, in detail, Abhi, uh, in, in, in established anaphylaxis, there is no role of antihistamine in the acute management. Acute management, there is only role of anaphylic, uh, uh, epinephrine and uh, your fluid resuscitation. But antihistamine can be given to reverse your urticaria, your itching, and pruritics like symptoms. So the, we can give, but we can either give cetrazine, which is rejects, or can give, can give typhine hydramine. Uh, in H2 blocker, uh, previously we used to give ranitidine, so the latest recommendation and now we can give famotidine. I guess uh, it comes with the name of uh, peptiban as well. Uh, steroids, so there is no role of, uh, of steroids in the acute phase, right? Uh, steroids only prevent uh, the delayed hypersensitivity response down the road, right? So you never start with gluco glucocorticoids. You can give as an adjunctive uh, in the sec uh, um, in like in the follow up management. And the recommended uh, glucocorticoid is methylprednisolone, one mg per kg, and the maximum dose is one twenty. 5 mg IV, or you can also give hydrocortisone, right? 
or prednisolone. Uh, if there is wheezing, which is not responding, usually the wheezing responds to epinephrine. If the wheezing is not responding to your epinephrine, you can nebulize with uh, albuterol or salbutamol, and the dose would be uh, 0.5 ml or minimum dose is 2.5 mg. If the child is less than 20 kg, you give 2.5 mg. If the child is more than 20 kg, you give 5 mg. Or simply, if the child is less than 20 uh, kg, you give 0.5 ml. And if the child is more than 20 kg, you give 1 ml, and dilute it to 3 ml on mama's line, and you repeat it as needed. Right, so these are the adjunctive therapies. Uh, coming to refractory anaphylaxis. Now, refractory anaphylaxis is the one which is not responding to your your epinephrine, your adjunctive treatments, and your normaline boluses. Right. What we can do, as discussed, you can start these patients on the epinephrine infusion. Uh, you start at two point uh, point one to uh, you can go up to one micro kg per minute. You need to titrate it and uh, keep uh, following the patient. Uh, another option is vasopressors. Yeah, the child may require vasopressors, uh, a second vasopressor in addition to epinephrine. And in the majority of the time, what happens is uh, these are the epinephrine is an adrenergic uh, receptor. So this as receptors get saturated. So if you are going to add another vasopressor, you need to add a non-adrenergic vasopressor and ideally a vasopressor in this case uh, works uh, well. Right. So, but these are very rare cases. Not in every case, and they do respond to epinephrine very well. So, glucagon. Uh, again, glucagon is not available in Pakistan, but you need to keep in mind theoretically that if the child is taking beta blocker for some reasons, and uh, these patients are at risk of having severe refractory anaphylaxis. So, in these patients, we we may uh, we need to give uh, glucagon, and the dose would be 20 to 30 mics uh, slow bolus, followed by uh, infusion at 5 to 15 mics per kg per minute, and again, you need to titrate it. Uh, according to weight. So another option for refractory anaphylaxis is methylene blue. So what happens is in, in very few cases, uh, uh, there is vasoplagia. That is profound vasodilation and which is uh, despite giving your epinephrine and doing everything, they are not responding, right? So in this case, you uh, can, uh, there are some few case reports uh, in which they give, uh, give methylene blue, uh, which is an inhibitor of nitric oxide synthetase and guanacyclase. So basically what happens is it's a jockey vasodilation. So a single bullet of one to two mg per kg or 26 it has been used in especially cardiac surgery patients, right? And uh, the last option is ECMO. If the patient is a, a, with respiratory anaphylaxis has been resuscitated with ECMO or operative cardiopulmonary bypass. So these are different options for uh, refractory anaphylaxis. So uh, coming to, uh, this is a table in which you can find all the doses of, uh, and the do, uh, doses and frequency of admission, uh, administration of your different uh, medication, including the first line uh, uh, medication, epinephrine, as we discussed, that would be one is to 1000 immediately, then every five to 15 minutes, you start with 0 0.01 mg per kg and the maximum dose is 0 0.5 mg. Uh, in H1 blocker, you have the option of per oral uh, rejects, uh, that is citrazine, you give it single dose, and the, the, uh, this is the doses uh, you can, uh, uh, find it in the from the heat lane or from the up to date. I have taken it from the up to date and one article. And you can give diphenhydramine, di 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 IV or IM. Uh, ranitidine is not uh, recommended now. You can give famotidine, uh, steroid, either prednisolone, hydrocortisone, or methylprednisolone. Uh, we can nebulize the cell with them all. We can also use nebulized epinephrine if there are signs of egg mm. obstruction, like there is persistent strider mm. or there is hoarseness or croupy cuff. Uh, or we can start IV uh, infusion of epinephrine uh, if there is persistent hypotension and no response after your uh, epinephrine boluses. And glucagon, especially in cases of beta, uh, if the child, if the uh, patient is taking beta blockers. Right, so this is the algorithm for anaphylaxis. I'll just briefly go uh, through it. Right. Uh, so when you encounter a patient with uh, having signs and symptoms of uh, and is fitting the clinical criteria of anaphylaxis, we have criteria discussed. So you give epinephrine. That would be 1 to 1,000, 0, 0.0 mg, 1 mg per kg into the lateral thigh. And you may repeat it every 5 to 15 minutes if symptoms persist. You will initiate with airway, breathing, and circulation, of course provide oxygen, monitor um, uh, continuous cardiorespiratory monitoring, IV access. Uh, it's good to have two cannulas. And then you see after giving, uh, after maintaining your airway breathing circulation and giving epinephrine, if there are, are there any signs of airway compromise or impending airway uh, obstruction or respiratory failure? For example, is there any persistent destroyer or uh, respiratory distress which is persisting and not improving? Then you plan for intubation or definitive airway management, right? And consult the ICU team. 
right? Uh, if there are no signs of AV compromise, then you assess again and uh, you see are there any signs of cardiovascular compromise in the form of hypertension or delayed capillary refill? Uh, if yes, then you start uh, fluid, uh, aggressive fluid resuscitation as discussed with uh, IV normal line 20 ml per kg and repeat as uh, needed for hyperperfusion, making sure that there are no signs of hyper uh, fluid overload. And along with that, you can start the second line pharmacological therapy and that is per oral or IV H1 and H2 antagonist, IV steroids and salvitamol for bronchospasm. Uh, then you reassess if, the, if there is persistent hypertension and despite giving repeated fluid boluses and giving epinephrine, if yes, then you start a, a, a epinephrine infusion uh, or try of glucagon if the patient was on beta blockers. And if there is no sign of hypertension and your patient has responded, then you admit the child to hospital. Uh, if there is no signs of airway compromise and no signs of cardiovascular compromise, and then you simply start your second line th therapy, like uh, as is called H1, H2 blockers, steroids, and, and nebulization for uh, bronchospasm. Uh, after the reassessment of the patient, and then you see are the clinical signs improved? Uh, yes, if yes, then you need to observe the patient for four to six hours for biophasic response. Now, this is a very important consideration, right? Uh, uh, these patients usually have biophasic response, right? They may have symptoms within uh, four to six hours. So it's always good to keep them under observation for four to six hours at least, right? And then you see if the patient is asymptomatic after observation period, then you uh, discharge home with education uh, follow-up. So uh, discuss as discussed, uh, these patients may have biphasic response and it occurs within the first four to, uh, four to six hours after the initial onset of symptoms. So the reasonable, reasonable time, length of time for observation for these patients would be four to six hours in the emergency department. And the physician must be aware that symptom may still reoccur up to 72 hours after initial presentation and counsel parents according to monitor for such a recurrence. So this is very important that uh, we need to counsel the parents that these uh, articular Rashes or these symptoms may reappear after going to home, but if not improve, uh, if not compromising patient's airway, having a significant uh, uh, effect on the CNS status, respiratory status, or cardiovascular status, they can be managed at home with the conservative, uh, uh, with the medication you have already prescribed. Uh, what we have seen that these kids are come to our, our emergency department, they are given epinephrine or antihistamine or steroids, and they respond very well. And within one or two hours, they have they are being discharged, and they come back later on in the emergency department with a similar symptom and re receive the same medications. Right, so you need to counsel the patient and reassure them again and again. Right, this is very important for all of us, right? What should be our discharge plan? So all the patients who have experienced anaphylaxis should be sent home with the following. Uh, an anaphylaxis emergency action plan. They should have an uh, action plan. And at least one epinephrine auto-injector in hand or a prescription for the two epinephrine auto-injectors. Unfortunately, we don't have it available now. And if it's available, it's very difficult. Normally, you don't have any medical stores. Right, so, but... Uh, you need to know kya aapne kya hota hai unke action plan mein aapne likh ke dena so that agar wo kisi general practitioner ke paas bhi jata hai to he should know that is bacche ko anaphylaxis hoga to humne fir epinephrine lagani hai kaun si dose lagani hai kitni dose lagani hai and the printed information about the anaphylaxis and its treatment and the counseling of the parents unko humne batana hai ki ji aapne is symptoms ko ko kaise perceive karna hai kaun se allergens ko aapne identify karna hai kaun kaun se allergens ko aapne avoid karna hai and documented advice to follow up to an allergist and with a referral if possible agar child is coming to you again and again with anaphylaxis do you need to refer the child to an allergist specialist right uh, this is uh, again an important consideration. What happens is child comes to us, we give them epinephrine, antihistamine, de hai, steroid, de hai, stop blocker, de hai, and then we send them home. So please, whenever you are starting any medication, continue it for three days. If you have given oral anti uh, diya hai, continue it for three to five days. If you have given antihistamine like S2 blocker, diya hai, ranitidine or famitidine, diya hai, usko, continue it for five days. If you have steroid, diya hai, to at least continue it for three days in the form of prednisolone. Right? Uh, it's good to have have an anaphylaxis band, right? In ke haath ke na, ek band pe na, they just kapa likha hota ji, they are uh, uh, at risk of having anaphylaxis. So, so that agar kabhi aisa reaction ho, or ye kisi bhi uh, hospital ke na, emergency mein jaye, to unko pehle se pata lag jayega ji, patient uh, is at risk. And delay now. And always update the medical record. Dekhe, agar kisi patient ko aapne dekh के आपके वार्ड में था और उसको एलर्जी हो गई किसी चीज से तो आप उसके वार्ड के ऊपर आप उसकी फाइल के ऊपर लिख दें मेंशन कर दें कि जी दिस पेशेंट इज एलर्जिक टू दिस एंटीबायोटिक सो दैट उसको दोबारा वो गलती से ना मिले या जहां पे इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मेडिकल रिकॉर्ड्स हैं वहां पे आपके पास क्या होता है हाई अलर्ट का साइन होता है आप जैसे ही पेशेंट का एमआर डाल के एंटर करते हैं आपके सामने एक हाई अलर्ट शो हो जाता है कि जी दिस पेशेंट इज एलर्जिक टू सेफ्राइजोन फॉर एग्जांपल सो आप उस पे फिर बोलिए एंटीबायोटिक नहीं ऐड करते 
राइट दिस इज दिन एक्शन प्लान नाउ देर आर मल्टीपल एक्शन प्लान डिफरेंट होते हैं डिफरेंट आपके पास अपने वार्ड सेटिंग के हिसाब से अपने हॉस्पिटल के सेटिंग के हिसाब से आप बनाते हैं सो आई हैव टेकन दिस फ्रॉम द अमेरिकन अकेडमी ऑफ पीडियाट्रिक Uh, it's a very good example uh, okay how what uh, should the anaphylaxis action plan should contain right yahan pe agar if zarurat ho aap patient ki uh, photo attach kar sakte hain name date of birth age weight and the child has allergic to what like egg peanut uh, along with that if the child has any uh, comorbid condition like asthma like uh, he had anaphylaxis previously yes or no the child may carry medicines or may give uh, herself medication medication yes or no okay and if anaphylaxis apne saath rakh sakte hain ghar pe laga sakte any and the important reminder aapne jo batana hota hai jis jo bhi ye padega that anaphylaxis is a potential life threatening condition and uh, if in doubt give apne apne agar koi doubt hai sometime your patient may not fit into the three criteria that already discussed but if you are in doubt that the child is may be having anaphylaxis because to aap uske andar anaphylaxis apne apne de sakte hain if you are in doubt so if you aapne ye dekhna hai inko ye bata diya ki aapne kaun kaun se symptoms ke liye dekhna hai is like uh, respiratory symptoms hain ya cardiovascular symptoms hain theek hai skin uh, uh, रिएक्शन हैं लाइक हाइव्स हैं अर्टिकेरियल रेशन हैं ठीक है जी इसके अलावा वट डू यू यू गिव एपिन एफरेन एंड देन यू कॉल नाइन वन वन और इन आर केसेस जो भी एम्बुलेंस है या किसी भी आपके पास जो आपका प्राइमरी केयर फिजिशियन है आप उसको कॉल कर सकते हैं या एमरजेंसी में लेके आ सकते हैं अगर माइल्ड एलर्जिक डायरेक्शन है तो आपने क्या करना है तो दिस इज द एक्शन प्लान जो कि आपने पेशेंट को देना है रिटर्न के अंदर होना चाहिए सो दैट ही कैन ही और शी कैन बी मैनेज अप्रोप्रिएटली एंड टाइमली Right. So, coming to epinephrine auto injector, also comes with the name of EpiPen. Uh, in most countries, Epi uh, epinephrine auto injectors are available in only two fixed doses. Uh, they either come in 0.15 mg and 0.3 mg. And recently, uh, uh, one uh, manufacturer has started making uh, epinephrine of 0.1 mg uh, preformed vials as well. So, epinephrine auto injector is preferred to avoid delays. And uh, if the child is less than 10 kg, you simply give 0.1 mg epinephrine auto injector. If the child is between 10 to 25 kg, you can give 0.15 mg. If the child is more than 25 kg, you give 0.3 mg. So, ideally, uh, when you're just dis discharging a child, uh, he should have. two epinephrine auto injectors uh, because as discussed previously 20% of patient require more than one doses of epinephrine especially if they had a previous episode of anaphylaxis so agar next episode ko in the next episode they may need more than one doses right so kaun se patient hai jinko aapne epinephrine auto injector dena hai right what are the risk factor that may indicate the need to prescribe self injectable epinephrine so there uh, if there is reaction to previous allergen exposure if there is repeat exposure is likely aapko lagta hai ki patient ek aise jagah pe hai jahan pe dobara iska exposure ho sakta hai ya koi known food trigger hai like peanut hai tree nut uh, hai you know aap bachcho ke andar bahut zyada aap parehaz nahi karwa sakte hai right they uh, want to explore and uh, uske andar they it's very it's impossible ki aap unko kisi cheez se allergy aur aap usse unko dur rakh sake right so you always need to be prepared or if they generalize urticaria from insect venom so in this condition aap inko epi epipen de ke bhejte hain iske alawa certain morbidities hain like asthma they are already at risk of uh, allergies or ya fir koi non selective beta blocker use kar raha hai to un patient mein bhi aur usko anaphylaxis ho to aap epipen de ke bhejte hain additional factors include initial reaction uh, detail was unclear and possible anaphylaxis tha and those living in a remote area from away from the medical care or access jinko pahunchne mein time lagta hai we know hamare paas patient bahut dur dur se aate hain to in patient ke andar it, it it may help so maybe in the future inshallah we will be having in our country as well so uh, regarding epipen is the tray ke sath ke paas kya hota hai yahan pe ek bag hota hai jo ke acha apne base ke around baan leta hai and usi ke andar aapka action plan bhi hota hai some comes with a picture and uske baad diagnosis and they looks very good right agar bachcha school ja raha hai to school jaate hue bhi apne sath wo leke ja sakta hai and aap school ke andar usi teacher ko bhi bata sakte hain ki ji if he is allergic so you need to give this and uh, there will be action plan jisko dekh ke wo uh, appropriately timely act kar sakte hain so uh, whenever you are giving uh, epinephrine uh, pen to the parents uh, practice with the training device उनको आप लगाना सिखाएं उनको देर आर डिफरेंट मैनिकन अवेलेबल जिसके ऊपर आप लगा सकते हैं इंट्रो मस्कुल इंजेक्शन आप अपने सामने लगा सकते हैं उनको इंकरेज करेंगे आप यू गो बैक एंड टीच अदर्स एज वेल राइट दूसरों को सिखाएं सो दैट आपकी अपनी अंडरस्टैंडिंग बेहतर होगी एंड रिप्लेस द ऑटो इंजेक्टर ईयरली ठीक है अगर एक एक साल के बाद आपको एपिनेफ्रेन ऑटो इंजेक्टर को रिप्लेस करना होता है राइट सो for example uh what to do if the child is having anaphylaxis and their your auto injector has expired so it is preferable to use an out of date auto injector rather than not injecting epinephrine at all because uh, it has been seen in certain in, in, in multiple studies that uh, auto uh, uh, epinephrine auto injector retains significant potency even up to 4 years after expiration date so it's good to give something than to give nothing 
राइट स्टोर कहाँ करना है आपने जिस तरह से आपके पास आपकी पोर्टेबल इंसुलिन होती है आपने उसी तरीके से इसको रखना होता है जो पेन वाली इंसुलिन होती है यू नीड टू कीप इट इन द न्यूट्रल टेम्परेचर यू कैन आई दीप इट इन द बेस पैक एज टू इन द पिक्चर और यू कैन कीप इट इन द पर्स और कैबिनेट्स द डिवाइस शुड नॉट बी रेफ्रिजरेटेड इसको आपने फ्रिज में नहीं रखना होता राइट और इनको आपने धूप से बचाना होता है right how to use epi epi pen so uh, what do you do uh, you form a fist around the epi pen and pull the off to safety release right so aapne sabse pehle kya karna hota hai so safety iska release button hota hai ya cap hota hai wo blue color ka aapne isko remove karna hota hai right then uske baad aap kya karte hain hold the leg extend and place the orange end against the outer mid thigh theek hai with or without clothing and then push down hard until a click is heard or felt and hold in place for 3 second and you count for 1001 1002 1003 1, and then remove remove it so that aapne jitne bhi dose diye hai wo aapke patient tak pahunch jaye system mein pahunch jaye iski circulation ke andar aa jaye right so to summarize uh uh what do what what do you do agar aapka patient aata hai with uh, the diagnosis of, of uh, anaphylaxis you on discharge management and follow an acute anaphylaxis uh, episode you give epinephrine auto injector and training for use you give anaphylaxis uh, action plan and education and you uh, provide them medical identification band which is anaphylaxis alert band and along with that you do uh, what do you uh, what you do uh, you confirm anaphylaxis triggers you try to find out what are the triggers that have uh, caused this anaphylaxis and uh, uh, and uh, the third and last step is avoidance of these right you avoid known triggers medications and you may need to desensitize them if needed right thank you Okay, thank you, Doctor Salaam. It was um, an excellent presentation, and we have covered uh, the topic very well. Now, now there are two questions in the chat box. Yep. Yeah. First is uh, if a child comes with stridor in the ear, so what will be the first step? Epinephrine or intubation? Right. So if the child is coming to you respiratory distress, so first step is basically obviously you may need to maintain airway. राइट right? अगर हम एल्गोरिज्म देखें वाई यू आर मेंटेनिंग एयर वे यू नीड टू प्रिपेयर एपिनेफ्रिन बिकॉज देखिए आपकी एपिनेफ्रिन ने जाके एक्ट करना है इट ओनली टेक्स फाइव मिनट्स उसको प्रिपेयर करना है सो स्ट्राइडर अलोन इज नॉट द इंडिकेशन फॉर इंटीबेशन राइट स्ट्राइडर इज अ साइन ऑफ रेस्पाइटरी डिस्ट्रेस बट येस इफ दैट रेस्पाइटरी डिस्ट्रेस इज कॉजिंग द पेशेंट टू गो इन टू रेस्पाइटरी फेलियर देन यू विल स्टार्ट पॉजिटिव प्रेशर वेंटिलेशन गो फॉर इंटूबेशन मीन वाई यू नीड टू अरेंज यूर एपिनेफ्रिन एंड गिव इट एज सुन एज पॉसिबल इफ आई एम गोइंग If I go back and show you uh, the algorithm, right? It's this one, right? So what it says that if the child presents with fine signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis, you start preparing and give epinephrine straight away, and then meanwhile you give uh, A B C, right? So, कभी भी ऐसा नहीं होता कि आप पहले मैं एयर भी मेंटेन करूँगा जब तक एयर भी मेंटेन नहीं होगा मैंने एपिनेफ्रिन नहीं लगानी। You keep doing a lot of stuff together, right? You have the uh, help you help with you. Uh, आप always call for help. एक एक uh, जो आपका स्टाफ है या डॉक्टर है उसको आप एपिनेफ्रिन लेने के लिए भेज दें और आप उसको एयर भी मेंटेन करना स्टार्ट कर दें। Okay, there was another question. Somebody asked that how uh, will you prepare or ask the staff to prepare the epinephrine infusion? Hmm. Right. So, yeah, whenever possible, try to give the epinephrine or any inotrope infusion through the uh, infusion pump. Right. Uh, but I know we are working in a resource limited setting. We have not many such infusion pumps available. Nahi hai. So uh, traditionally, there has been a way that you have to dilute the dose of the drug in 100 ml chamber mein dilute karte and then over the 24 hours, you are giving it 4 ml per kg. Pe, uh, dose chala rahe hote right? So you can always take help from the pharmacy. I'm sorry, I won't be able to answer you on this very well. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, a patient came with the complaint of the urticaria. First, yeah. we will manage the patient uh, with NP histamine and uh, vice versa, and then the patient develop uh, like uh, a shock condition, like in uh, mm -hmm. patient develop hypotension, CRT delay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we will manage like anaphylactic shock. Yeah, welcome. Okay, if uh, it is difficult to perform. Intubation. Then what will we do? 
या सो वेन एवर यू आर गोइंग टू परफॉर्म सो अब वो वाली टर्म्स नहीं है देखें इफ यू आर गोइंग टू परफॉर्म इंटूबेशन इट इज आइर अर्जेंट इंटूबेशन और इमरजेंट इंटूबेशन राइट एमरजेंसी डिपार्टमेंट में जो भी इंटूबेशन होती है वो आपके पास आइर इट विल भी इमरजेंट और अर्जेंट इंटूबेशन बट वेन एवर यू आर परफॉर्म इंटूबेशन यू नीड टू फॉलो आर एस आई दैट इज रेपिड सिक्वेंस इंटूबेशन अगर आप आर एस आई की पीस की बात करें देर सेवन पीस आउट ऑफ द ब्लू कोई भी पेशेंट आके इंटूबेट नहीं होता सो यू नीड टू बी प्रिपेयर इन एडवांस उसका पहला पी ही प्रिपेरेशन है सही आपका सारा इक्विपमेंट रेडी होना चाहिए आपके पास सारी प्री ऑक्सीजनेट करना है आपने देन प्री मेडिकेट करना है देन पैरालिसिस इंडक्शन एंड ऑल सो इफ यू आर एंटिसिपेटिंग के यार ये एयरवे डिफिकल्ट है सो इट्स ऑलवेज गुड टू आस फॉर हेल्प ठीक है आप आपने के कोई भी सीनियर है आप उससे हेल्प ले सकते हैं सीनियर अवेलेबल नहीं है तो आपके पास आप एनिसिया वालों को ई का बैकअप बुला सकते हैं अगर नहीं है यू कैन इंसर्ट एल एम ए अगर आ, 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 आपको लगता है कि जी अपर एयर वो ऑप्शन इतनी ज़्यादा नहीं है एल एम ए कैन बेनिफिट लेन जल मास्क एयर वे इट प्रोवाइड्स यू सेम रिजल्ट्स एज दैट ऑफ एंटीबेशन फॉर एटलीस्ट फॉर फोर आवर्स बल्कि अब जो रीसेंट सर्जरीज हो रही हैं दैट रिक्वायर्स ओनली थ्री टू फोर आवर्स सर्जरी दे आर बीइंग परफॉर्म अंडर एल एम ए तो एल एम ए इज़ अ वेरी गुड ऑप्शन टू हैव अदरवाइज यू हैव फ्रंट ऑफ नेक प्रोसीजर्स फोना विच आर कॉल्ड लाइक क्रैको थाइरोटोमी और ट्रैक ऑस्टोमी Okay, I guess um, uh, sir has answered your question as well. Doctor uh, Hassan, is just last question: Is the glucagon available in Pakistan? And you've already mentioned it's not. So, is there any alternative? Yeah. So, uh, I'm a bit, I'm very skeptical about giving these patients uh, epinephrine while at home because it's a high risk medication. What we can do for these patients is that we can give them a written as uh, uh, anaphylaxis action plan. If this child has another such reaction, then he will go to any close by clinic or close by emergency. He will go there and show him 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 and show him. Because for a layman person, making epinephrine is not that easy. तो अगर आपका एपिनेफ्रिन ऑटो इंजेक्टर अवेलेबल नहीं गिव द सिंपल एपिनेफ्रिन बट गिव एपिनेफ्रिन नो दे आर आस्किंग अबाउट ग्लूकागॉन इज देयर एनी अल्टरनेटिव फॉर ग्लूकागॉन ऑल राइट ऑल राइट सॉरी सॉरी या नो आई हैवंट सीन नॉट इन माय प्रैक्टिस ओके ओके या एनी साइड इफेक्ट्स ऑफ एपिनेफ्रिन या देयर आर मल्टीपल so uh, there uh, one of the most uh, commonly missed side effect of epinephrine is basically arrhythmia there are, are tachyarrhythmia that are commonly missed uh, with uh, these are the uh, side effects associated with many uh, multiple uh, inotropes so you need to keep that in mind among many okay that's uh, thanks a lot dr salah it was a very informative and elaborative presentation Great. and i'm sure um, a lot of concepts has been cleared and thanks all thanks a lot for taking out time and thanks to everybody all the participants you can fill in the survey form the side effect ki treatment kya hogi agar epinephrine se side effect ho jaye to hello ji 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 bole ji wo sir side effect agar ho jate hain epinephrine se to uski treatment pe anti arrhythmic wagera uski koi protocol hai ya yeah it will it will depend on the clinical condition and it will vary from case to case it's very difficult to give you one statement ki aapne kaun si dawai istemal karni hai aur kya karna hai obviously it will uh, it will vary from patient to patient kya side effect hua hai kitna arrhythmia chal raha hai obviously agar aapke paas if the patient uh, if you are managing a patient jisko uh, anotropic infusion ki zarurat hai aur aapko epinephrine dena hai aur usko arrhythmia ho raha hai to obviously you need to uh, uh, titrate the dose aapne usko kam karke dusra inotropic switch karna padega right so there are it will depend on from case to case not a single statement yes obviously it will depend upon uh, case to case and a comorbidity as well so yep. according to the complication okay thanks a lot